So how old are you? 25. And are you an IV drug user? I am. Um, how long have you been an IV drug user? About eight years. Uh, is there anything that you wish you had been told or that you had known when you were younger or maybe when you first started using? When I first started using, it was with friends and they never told me about how addictive it was and how sick you would get. And I was using recreationally on the weekends to begin with and then it started daily because I was waking up sick and not knowing what was going on with my body and then eventually learning that the dope was making me so sick. And I wish that I would have been told that it takes total control of your physical and mental body and can make you that sick. Heroin is, is physical addiction. It's not, it's not a mental addiction. It's not something that you just put down and say, yeah, I'm done with it. What it does is it goes into your brain and it replaces the dopamine that your hypothalamus produces. So when your hypothalamus doesn't need to produce that chemical that you're putting into your body, it stops doing it. And what causes the withdrawals is that when you stop feeding it that and it's not getting it for free, the hypothalamus has to work really hard. Take the same amount of dopamine just to make your normal day go, which causes the body pains, the restless leg, the, the diarrhea, the sweats, vomiting, vomiting. Cold, hot flashes. Yes. If I can say anything to anybody who's gonna watch this video, don't do heroin. What are some of the risks of using needles to use drugs? Oh, there's, there's, a, there's a few risks. <laughs> um, you know, for one, hepatitis C, uh, HIV. Hepatitis C and AIDS can be passed through intravenous drug use by sharing needles or sharing even the cotton that you use to pull your, your drugs through. You can get abscesses. Um, what, what's an abscess? An abscess is when an infection grows under the muscle and under the skin and they actually have to lance it. They cut a hole in you, they take all the infection out, and they leave it open and pack it with gauze. You have to continue to go back to the hospital to get it unpacked and repacked oh, and it has to heal from the inside out. So you have an open wound on your body. Um, I don't know if you can see, but here's one. Do you have any um, track marks? Yeah, there's a small dimple there, and then, and these are from over four years of usage, there's a dimple there, and that happens when you continuously use the same place, and that's not safe either, you should always try and use a different place, rotate. Two months ago, there was some bad dope going around, and what it had in it was it had rat poison, feces, and some other stuff in it. I heard about that. And it was uh, almost giving a lot of killing a lot of people. Those are just some of the downsides of uh, the intravenous drug use. What are some things that you do um, to be safe? I try and use a new needle every time. I never, ever, and let me repeat, ever share a rig, cotton, or water, or anything that I use to inject my drugs with anyone else. Ever. Um, so uh, you've never, you've never shared needles. I have. I have in the past. I'm not gonna lie. I have. Yeah, I have. Do you know other people who do? Uh, uh, almost everybody probably does. If they have drugs and they don't have needles, they're gonna use it somehow. Um, well, they have the needle exchange up here, which is uh, great. Uh, you can go there Monday through Fridays. Uh, exchange your needles. We are a program that was started 21 years ago here in Portland that works with IV drug users to help reduce the harm on the community and the individuals um, due to injectable drugs. We do HIV and hepatitis C testing, syringe exchange. For free? It's all free? Yes, yes, everything is free. And we talk a lot about vein care, um, how to keep yourself safe. HIV, hepatitis C prevention. We do referrals to drug and alcohol treatment centers and things like that. So it's basically talking to people about what their options are and what they're interested in. But if people aren't interested in it, they don't have to talk to us about it. Uh, what, what, what does someone have to do to get services? Walk, Walk in the in door, in. ask for needles. We're going to ask very basic statistics like age. You have to be over the age of 18. How many needles you're bringing back? We see between 100 and 150 people a day. It is something that does make a difference 
last year we took in over a half a million needles here in our 25 hours a week. So that's a half a million needles that aren't in our parks, in our sewers, in our trash cans, on our sidewalks. Little kids picking it up. I remember I found a needle on the ground when I was a kid and yep. I didn't know what it was. Yeah. I um. just know you want to play doctor. Science has proven that syringe exchange is, is effective to lower HIV rates, lower hepatitis C rates, lower overdose rates, and increase recovery rates in cities that have them. And it's a very widely studied program, as it's a very controversial program. What do you think is some misinformation that IV drug users have? Can just they can just use recreationally, and you know that it's going to be okay. And you know, event, you know, once you get into it, it's hard to get out. You know. There's a big myth out there that if you bleach a needle, it's good. Bleach does not kill hepatitis C. So if you have a friend that shoots up and you use that same needle, hey, even if you bleach it out, if your friend has hepatitis C, you're still taking a chance on getting hepatitis C because bleach does not kill hepatitis C. Around HIV specifically, the people assume that their greatest risk for getting HIV is using needles when in reality, even amongst IV drug users, most people who get HIV are getting it from their sexual practices. So where, where did you learn what you know about, about being safe? Actually, I learned an outside in here in Portland. Their services are great. I think they try and inform people very well. They have a, a she's kind of a counselor Woo! Uh, that speaks to people if they're having problems. They always have uh, safety things written on their board, if bad dope's going around, they've got uh, messages, postages about it, and that really helps people too. For me, that is the hardest part about working here, is just knowing that there's not enough services to go around. What are some misconceptions that you think people have about IV drug users? In the end, they are still people, and it's an addiction, and a lot of people don't see addiction as a disease and that's a huge misconception because it is a disease. Not every intravenous drug user is out there to rob still, to do whatever they have to to get their next fix. You know, I used to tour with the Grateful Dead, nice stuff, I hang out with a lot of, um, I guess you would say, hippie kids. You know, a lot of them turn, turn their backs on me because, you know, I've been using using heroin. The person they follow across the United States, Jerry Garcia, was an interview drug user. You know, he did heroin. You know, um, it almost doesn't make sense to me. They didn't turn their back on Jerry and uh, quit touring. If there was one thing that you could do, that you could say, that you could make sure everyone was informed about, what would it be? You're worth taking care of yourself. No matter what you're doing, no matter what drugs you're using, no matter what stigmas are being placed upon you, everyone has the right and the responsibility to take care of their health and take care of themselves. And you're worth it, even if you don't feel like it and nobody else realizes you are. You can make positive changes and you do have the power to do that. If you do, if you are an intervening drug user and you know you have hepatitis C or you know you have AIDS, don't offer someone to f share their needle, you know, just to give them a rig or a, a, a rig to use. No matter how hard up you are, you know, it's not worth it. You know, because one day you might have a family, you might have kids, and you know, 